I know that if it's not successful, I just need to switch some things around to make it successful. And I won't stop until it is. So I know that if I'm in charge of it, it's going to be super successful. I don't really have to worry because I'll do whatever I have to do to make it that way. Crafted Entrepreneurs, I am so excited to have you today because we have a very special guest. You know, I only like to bring you like the best of the best, the cream of the crop. And today I'm bringing you a top YouTuber. She has almost a million followers. Can you imagine how big that audience is on YouTube? It takes consistency and it takes really being authentic on there to grow that big of an audience. So we're going to learn a lot from today's expert. She is also an author, entrepreneur, real estate investor. So help me welcome Shannon Rose to the show. Welcome, Shannon. Hi. Thank you so much for having me. Okay. I am so excited because I think we met on Instagram, I'm pretty sure. And we've just kind of like, you know, talked back and forth. And I've just really learned about your story, which is fascinating because you are actually a former porn star turned yes. YouTuber. So you were, this is like the first for crafted entrepreneurs on here. Okay. So in your book, you really talk about going through your early childhood and how you, you know, suffered from traumatic events and that kind of led you to where, you know, you ended up being a porn star. I want to get into that because I think it's fascinating that you're out of that world. You're mm-hmm. now a born again believer. I just saw you were baptized in Palm Springs. Yeah. So you're living your life out loud for the Lord and just like praise God, you know, for everything that you've come through and God really like fought for your soul, it sounds like. So I want to talk about that. What was your childhood like that landed you to become a porn star? Yeah, I think, you know, it's so it's so crazy because I feel like everyone kind of has, well, most people have like some sort of childhood that maybe wasn't the best, right? 100%. Yeah. And it's funny because some people grow up and they're totally fine and it didn't really like maybe affect them as much as others. But for me, it definitely affected me. I grew up, uh, my parents got divorced when I was younger and I just had a really awful stepmom who, you know, at such an impressionable young age was telling me all kinds of things that you know, weren't true that I was, you know, fat and ugly and, um, you know, like not smart. And I have, I actually do have learning disabilities. So it really just really shattered my self-esteem from a young age. And so I think because of that, and like, I mean, I don't know how much we want to like get into on your podcast. It's all what you want to get into. Yeah. Okay. (laughs) Yeah. Um, well she had like put me into psychiatric, so she had like cut my wrists and and like what? put me into a psychiatric hospital. Yes, that is like um one of the wow. one of the stories I tell like in my book. I actually like still have like scars um fr- from oh it. Oh my gosh. And I think like you know and I and I don't ever want to like make people feel bad for me, right? Cuz everybody's like everybody's gone through horrible shit, right? Like but I think that uh it can really screw you up when you're little, you know? And not think it I mean studies show it does. Yeah. I mean, Yeah. Statistics show that it will mess you up. That's insane. And I think there's also like this part of like, you get to own your story and people are just going to have compassion for that because especially people that are moms too, because our heart is like going to be broken for that sweet little Shannon, you know, that didn't have somebody protecting her. Right. And that is like sad, but also God is so good to see where you are today. Like he's getting all the glory. And so, wow, like that's just like mind blowing to me that you had to go through that. And I'm so proud of you for, you know, being where you are now. Yeah. Thanks. Well, yeah. So I think that that's kind of like, you know, led to, um, a lot of issues, right. Uh, psychologically growing up. And I just thought that I was just not good enough to have any other job. So I, I mean, like not even working at McDonald's, I didn't think I was good enough for that. I didn't think I was good enough to you know, uh, do anything other than kind of sell my body. Did you come into contact with somebody or who did you know that was in that world that made you go, Oh, I could do that. Well, I started escorting at 14 when I was still in high school. Yeah. How did, how did that happen? 
<laughs> you don't have to talk about it if you don't want to. I'm no, just like, I talk about all of this in my book. Like all okay. my books, I um I wrote my story in my books, but I also put like learning lessons at the end of each chapter so that people that are young that might be going through something similar have somebody, you know, like because I didn't. And that was like one of the biggest things I wanted to do for my books, like an older sister, or like the mom, you know, you wanted to have. So yeah, uh, one day from high school, I was ditching and a limo driver like picked me up on the side of the road and had offered me money for sex. And I said yes. And I was doing drugs and, you know, into all kinds of stuff just to kind of like numb the pain of what I was dealing with at home. And so I was willing to really do anything to get money to pay for drugs. So did you have anybody in your life that was an advocate, like any social workers, teachers, like anybody that was trying to help you? I did have one teacher, Mrs. Baker. I'll never forget her. She was my English teacher. And she had noticed one day that I had, um, you know, uh, like bandages around my wrists. And I think she knew like that I had something going on. And so she actually gave me a pass for class, like that I could leave class whenever I wanted. And she actually picked me up. I think this is illegal, but she like picked me up from home. Like when she noticed I wasn't at school to like come get me to come into class. Sadly, she committed suicide herself. But I think that like, I know it's heartbreaking, but I think that like it takes one to know one, you know? And so those are the people that are always like looking out for you. I'll never forget her. Uh, So yeah, she, she was the one person. And you know, my mom is an amazing mom, but both my parents just worked so much that they were never, you know, I was like what you call like a latchkey kid, you know, so they weren't even home. So they didn't even know I wasn't in school. So it was just like a multitude of like many things in childhood that I think led me to, you know, getting into this career. I actually did. It's funny. We, our stories are similar, but not similar because I actually went to nursing school also. I never ended up graduating. I went to a lot of different schools, like cosmetology school, phlebotomy. I actually got my phlebotomy license, EMT school. Like through college, I I did like a ton of different things because I didn't really know what I wanted to do or I would get bored easily. So I'd like switch. But I tried to do a bunch of things that just didn't really work out. And I ended up getting into the porn industry. Okay. So you wind up in the porn industry. How does God get you out of that? Yeah. So the secret, I watched it for the first time and it was the first time in my life that I realized, oh my goodness, I can make my life what I want it to be. Like no one, I mean, maybe it's common sense for some people, but like I just always had grown up thinking I was dumb and not smart and fat and ugly. And like I just that wasn't in the cards for me, you know? And well, that was really just like the devil's plan. Like he had his schemes and he was playing with you. You know, that's what he does is he tells little kids lies like that. Wow. Okay. So you see this movie. I watched the secret. I don't even know how I found it. I think that's like a God thing, you know, like it's somehow when I needed it the most fell into my lap and I watched it and it changed my whole life from then on out. And it took a while to, you know, build up that self-esteem and confidence. But I, I realized like, this is not what I want to do, you know, and it's not making me happy. It was fun, you know, I'll admit, cause I was young. And when everyone was in college and partying, you know, I had a lot of money and I was, you know, going on private planes with celebrities and like, you know, doing all of these like fun things that I would have never been able to do otherwise. But I wasn't, happy, you know? And at the end of the day, like I wanted to be a mom and have a family and be successful in something that I actually liked and enjoyed doing. And that is kind of how YouTube came along. Wow. Okay. So you decide to start a YouTube after you got out of that industry. Talk to me about that transition. Yeah. So I had slowly started to get out, but I did not know what I was going to do after doing porn for eight years. I'm like, who is going to hire me? No one. In fact, I was like, oh, maybe like there'll be people that, you know, because give people a second chance. And so I applied at like Marshall's, TJ Maxx, like all these places. And it was like, 
<laughs> really difficult because I'm like, what do I put as work experience? Right. And so right. I didn't really know what to do. I'm like, do I just not fill it out and just pretend like this is my first time? So that's kind of what I did. But unfortunately with the internet these days, people Google, you know, your name. And even though I used a stage name, you know, they're interconnected. The second someone online finds out, you know, they, they put it up in your whatever and you, it's hard to get away from, you know, once you do OnlyFans or, or any type of porn or anything, it is always, always out there. Something you can't take back. And so I could not get a job and I was like, I don't know what I'm going to do. So I ended up making a video on YouTube, not because I thought I could make money from it, but just because my sister was like, can you show me how to do makeup? And she lived in Colorado. So I was like, I'll make you a YouTube video and send it to you. You can watch it over and over. And that's kind of how my first video came along. And then other people watched wow. it. How long ago was this? It was like 10 years ago. Okay. People were just like getting used to YouTube 10 years ago, I feel like. I I didn't know you could make money from it then. I just- yeah, I didn't you know, either 10 years ago. I yeah. wish I would have. <laughs> and then I was like, but this is kind of fun. I kind of like like making videos and I liked makeup, even though like I wasn't that great at it. I was no like Jaclyn Hill. I, oh, I yeah. still liked and enjoyed it. And, um, you know, so I, I kept making makeup videos thinking, you know, oh, maybe this will help someone. And then one day I got a comment like, Hey, aren't you that girl that used to do porn? <laughs> oh my and gosh. Something about me and just my personality is that I am very honest and and kind of blunt and I will just say it like it is. And I was like, yep, that was me, you know. Um not that I wasn't ashamed of it, but I just don't like lying to people and I also I don't know. Something inside of me was like, I just need to be honest and like tell my truth and my story. And so people wanted to know about the porn industry and like what that was like and how I got into it and how did my parents find out, you know, and like those type of stories that are entertaining to people. But also I was able to use my platform to teach from my mistakes and hope that people would learn to not make the same mistakes I did. And so that's kind of how I started YouTube and grew my platform was talking about my past. And by the miracle of God, I was able to, you know, make it a full-time job. Right. Oh my goodness. Wow. That's amazing. What do you feel like has been the hardest thing about just living so publicly with like people knowing everything about you pretty much? Well, I think it wasn't so hard before I had kids. It wasn't until I had kids that, you know, people have really given me a hard time. So I think that that's the hardest thing is, I don't know, it, it's, it's a lot. There, there's a lot going on that I'm still trying to like figure out. The good thing about doing YouTube and like posting blogs and stuff like that is like, we, we show you what we want to, right? I think for me, I show a lot more than what most people do because I really don't like watching these like perfect, you know, families on YouTube. It's not relatable. And you know, they might get more brand deals, but to me, like at the end of the day, you know, money is not always the most important thing. And mm -hmm. so for me, I think the reason that I still make videos and, and post to family and, and, you know, our lives is because I wish other people were doing it. So I knew that like, I wasn't so alone when I was like dealing with certain things, you know? Yeah. Yeah. That's, I was doing some research and watching some of your videos and I love, I feel like I've had, a, I've actually had clients in the past that are like YouTube stars. And it's like, you look at their stuff and you're like, okay, like I get it. You're only posting what you're, you're a, um, they're a character on their YouTube mm -hmm. channel. Right. And I get mm -hmm. it. I totally get that. Like there's no shame in that, but it's like on yours, it's like, I really feel like, you know, it's the real you you're probably, yes, oh, yeah. you are only posting what you want them to see, but I don't feel like you're playing an actress. Like I really oh, no. feel like. That would be yeah, way too hard you. for me. I am no actress. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so so you you become a YouTube star. You're making money from YouTube. You make it your full time mm -hmm. career, and you're starting to understand that like you you need like passive streams of income. Like you want to diversify. How do you get into becoming a real estate investor? And I want to talk about this next season that you're in right now with your glamping stuff, which I think is so cool. Oh, thank you. By the way, I would love for you guys to come stay. You guys are welcome anytime. If you want to come stay at the glamping camp, we'll totally shut the camp down for you so you can have it to yourselves. Oh, um, I love it. But I actually have a, um, a huge like 
uh, freaking bus that we never use anymore. We used to use it when the kids would go to Pismo Coast Village. Yeah. Um, but now we never use it. It's at um, my in-law's house in Bakersfield, actually. Oh my um, God. I'm in my anyway. RV right now. The one that we travel in. We traveled in this oh for gosh. like a year. Yeah. Um, that's so cool that you have a bus. I didn't, you've got to post that on, on Instagram. I want to see I that. Know. Well, we don't, I don't do, I don't do it. Like, I don't remember the last time that we actually even used it, but the thing that's funny, you guys that are listening in right now is she's actually into Hatchby right now, which is like 30 minutes away from where I grew up. And I used to work at Tehachapi hospital. No way. Yeah. I would pick up shifts in the ER when I was like coming out of it, I had already made like a full-time career, you know, health coaching, but I would, I was like scared to give up ER nursing because I wanted to still be able to use that skill. So I would go, I would drive up to Tehachapi and a couple of my friends still work there in the ER. Yeah. Yeah. I can't believe that you like let your license go, your nursing license. Like I, I know how hard it is because I, I went to nursing school, like how hard it is to get your nursing license. <laughs> like you must have been, that must have been so scary to do. It actually like still bothers my mother-in-law because she was a nurse too. Well, she still is technically a nurse. So she's actually like right now, like on my tail, like she has everything like for me. She was like, it's almost like one more year and you're not gonna be able to get it again. Like, I guess if I take a bunch of tests, I'll still be able to have my license. And I might just do it because she, it really bothers her that like I let it go. Like she's like so scared for me. I'm like, it's be so easy for me just to take these tests and like give her peace. So I might yeah. do it and I might have a, like an active license again. So we'll see. Man, you should just do it so that like you can do like fillers and Botox and like at like your parties for your friends. I know, I'm like, right. <laughs> I, I'm too scared of like the, I actually have a client that does that, but I'm like, I don't want liability. Like that oh, yeah. was the thing that scared me the most about being an ER nurse. Like, and I would, I would be just so stressed all the time because of the liability that mm. would happen. And then when I started making money, that's where I was like, oh no, like I have to, now I understand a little bit more about how to protect yourself from yeah. those types of things. But still I'm like, no, I don't want to put myself and my family in that situation. So yeah, I don't know. Okay. So you, you have this glamping camp side note, right? Tangent. We're a bunch of girls uh, yeah. in Tehachapi. So yeah. talk to me, walk me through how you ended up in this, in this world. Yeah, well, it was a long road to get here. So w when I was doing YouTube, I was like, okay, well, I'm making money from AdSense, but like, I need to figure out how to be smart about this because I know it's not going to last forever. So like, how do I make money? I mean, I did everything from like subscription boxes where, you know, like I would sell that to my audience and we did, a, I had a makeup line at one point. I mean, there were a lot of different things that I had done to see like what I would like. Cause I thought that that was fun, but you know, it wasn't giving me exactly the income I wanted. And then my husband actually bought his first house when he was younger and his dad was a contractor. So we've always had a rental, like a long-term rental this whole time. And we realized, okay, well, this is cool because it's bringing in some passive income. Yeah. Um, and so we bought a few more houses and then I had always wanted to do a glamping camp because growing up, I didn't have a lot of good memories, but the good memories I did have was when I was camping with my family. Aww. That was like something that I always really cherished and always looked forward to. And we go water skiing every 4th of July for my dad's birthday. So that was really special. And I always in my mind, like love the idea of maybe finding like an abandoned summer camp, you know, and like turning it into something really awesome and like reviving it for people to go make those special memories with their families. Um, but I just couldn't find anything. And then I was like, okay, I want to try the Airbnb thing. So we found a cabin and we're still working on that to Airbnb, but it was on 20 acres and or 18 acres. And so I was like, oh my gosh, this would be the perfect place to do a glamping camp. So I called the city and I'm like, hey, can I put a glamping camp here? And do I need permits? And they're like, yeah, go for it. Like Airbnb is allowed into Hatch Peak. It's not in oh. Los Angeles. So that's why like we had to find something outside of LA. And I just started doing as much research as I could. I joined a mastermind with a lot of people that knew a lot about real estate investing and started getting in that circle to learn as much as I could and just surrounding myself with people that were doing what I wanted to do. And yeah. And then the little glamping camp was, was born. That is so awesome. Okay. So do you feel like the glamping camp is like one of many? Like what's your plan? Like what's your five-year goal when it comes to these? 
So I would absolutely love to expand and open up more locations in different areas. That's definitely a goal. Right now, I'm just trying to get really good at this one so that I can learn all the systems and processes and learning to build teams and get everything in place. And then once I get really good at it, then I want to scale and and do it in more places. Would you say, so like right now, how many camping spots do you have? So right now we started with three okay. um, because I, I used all my own money to do this. There's no like an outside investors. And then we actually found out that we did need permits through the county because a news anchor was actually driving down the road and saw our little camp and was like, oh, we'd love to do a story. So we were like so excited and we got on the news and we're like, yeah, we opened up this fun little glamping camp. And then we got letters from the county. That's like, yeah, you can't do that. (laughs) Oh my gosh. That's amazing. Okay. That's also a God wink too, probably because like before you had a hundred. Right. Right. So we're now working with the county and we had to get a landscape architect and work with getting plot plans. So we submitted those and we're going to try to do six and just start small again because I'm financing everything myself and I want to just make sure that I get it really close to perfect. And then once that does well and, you know, like I said, I learn everything and can pass it off to someone else to manage and operate, then I will go look for my next one. And then maybe then that's when I'll start trying to um, raise money to, to make more. Okay. Have you, so have you started like the marketing process for these or is it barely like, it's still like in the permit phase where people. Yeah, we're still getting permits right now. Um, I'm hoping we have to have like a public hearing. It's so crazy. Like with the, like send letters to your neighbors. Um, oh yeah. So- I mean, it's permits are the hardest thing to get. And especially in California, they take Ugh, forever. The they worst forever. in California. I yeah. mean, they're having to do like all kinds of testing to the soil and making sure that like our soaps are biodegradable and that it's going into like a, you know, a, it's a whole thing, right? Um, a lot more than I thought. Do you think your next one will be outside of California? Oh, yeah. I think so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for sure. Okay. So let's just talk about like dream idea because I love to okay. like strategize. Okay. So, you know, once the permits are done, Mm -hmm. you're going to market, what's your plan to market and get these things full? Yeah. So I think that one of the biggest things is like leveraging my social media. Although I have quickly learned that like, I've only had one or two people from my social media actually book our camp. It's really been just people that are like local, a lot of people from Bakersfield, people from San Francisco. So we just started our own website. And then also we started social medias for the glamping camp. And that's kind of like what we're working on now. I'm super excited for this whole concept because I love that my kids are like in, you know, Newport beach in orange County where it's like, so I love living here, but it's like a bubble and to take them camping. It's one of their favorite things to do with my in-laws actually. And they actually have a spot at Pismo post village, but I'm gonna have to tell them about this glamping camp up into Hatch Peaks, it's much closer than the beach. And they love just to have like the campfires and just to make memories with the kids. I think it's so important to just be out in nature. So I love that you're giving people an opportunity to go Mm -hmm. offline, right? And just like be in their lives. And for you, like what's the special twist that Shannon's putting on this business to make it like Shannon's? I think one of the things that I try to do was to... I'm like, how do there's other glamping camps, but like, how do I make mine stand out? How do I make mine different? Why are people going to want to come to mine? And so what I did was I did a lot of research on what other people were providing as far as amenities. And I think what I did that was different and unique was we have an adult lounge tent. So it's like one of those big bell tents and it's got a couch in there. You can go in there and have like your morning coffee or tea. You can go journal. There's a bunch of books. So there's like a whole library in there. You can like pick up a book. There's board games. We even have arts and crafts. So we have like crocheting and like yarn for people. Like if they wanted to like go grab yarn and or a book and take it out by like the campfire. We also have a kid's tent that's like just for kids and it's got like a telescope for them that they can like stargaze at night. They also have like arts and crafts and books and board games. And then we also have archery. We have like a ninja obstacle course. We have a slack line. So there's like, there's even a meditation rock. So we have, we've put a lot of things out there so that people don't get bored and there's stuff to do, but it's different than 
you know, what you would do at like your regular campsite, right? Yeah. Oh my gosh. I love that. I'm definitely going to have to check out this situation. And I feel like so many of my listeners are going to love this too. So, okay, let's, I want to switch gears here because we've talked about glamping. We've talked about your story. I want to get into the mindset of what it takes to invest all of this hard earned money from years and years of putting your life online to then go put it into this dream of yours. Most people wouldn't take the risk, right? Because their minds like are so set on just like a, a, the fixed safe route, which I think isn't safe at all. But for you, you're going like, I'm going to go all in on my dream. So talk to me about the mindset of how you said, I'm going to bet on me. So I think one of the biggest things is if you're doing something that you love to do, you're going to be really good at it because you're going to give it your all and you're going to be thinking about it at night. You know, like I think a lot of people with like certain jobs, if they're not really like a hundred percent like into it and super passionate and with all their heart, they're not going to be thinking about it 24 seven. And I know that you've talked about balance before. I don't have that. I have, yeah. I do not have balance when I want to do something. I am like going to go a hundred, 200 percent at it. And so I know that if it's not successful, I just need to switch some things around to make it successful and I won't stop until it is. So I know that if I'm in charge of it, it's going to be super successful. I don't really have to worry because I'll do whatever I have to do to make it that way. I love that. I mean, talk about a complete like 180 from where you don't believe in yourself at all. And now coming into this, like, Hey, if, if it's in my camp, it's going to work because if it's up to me, it's going to be right. So what were some things that you put into place to really get that confidence back in yourself? I think just knowing that our, our minds are a powerful thing, you know? And I, I think that I just, even sometimes today, I still have to like wake up in the mirror and be like, you got this Shannon, like you could do it. But I think just over the years of, of, of failing and, and figuring out that like, you're going to mess up and you're going to fail and you just have to like get back up and, and figure out what's going to work and learn from your mistakes. I think that that builds confidence over time. Yeah. I think that there's two parts to that. It's like, yes, like you, but you still, you have to have the gumption and the grit to get back up. And a lot of people don't have that, like get back up in them. I believe that everybody learns more from their failures than they do their wins. You oh, just totally. do, right? So, but you have to have that mindset of like, okay, what am I, what did I learn? What did I learn from this? Let's go, let's go, let's get at this again, right? But there's also that other side of building confidence where you keep promises to yourself. Mm. So talk to me about like, obviously you made promises to yourself along the way because you're in a completely different life now. So I want to hear the, some of the promises you made to yourself to, you know, subconsciously build that confidence up. I think a big thing for me, I wouldn't say so much. It's like a promise. It's more of like, I have to do this. There's not really another, another way that I can do this and be happy and be able to spend time with my kids as much as I want. And so, you know, like there's, there's no like fallback plan really. Like you make it work. I want to mm -hmm. do it so bad that like, I'm, I don't know. I guess there's no really like promises I made. I'm just like, I'm going to do it. Right. Yeah. Well, there's probably like, you don't even realize that you're probably doing it. And I want to break this down for the listeners because it sounds like it was easy for her. And I don't know, I haven't been a part of her life, but I know that it wasn't just because I know how hard it is to win in life, you know? And so it's like, if you have that mindset, I'm going to do it. It's like, okay, it's one thing, one foot in front of the other. Right. Okay. So there was one time that she said, I'm going to post this, make a video. And she did it. And a couple of people liked it. And then she goes, oh, I'm going to keep doing it. And, and then people kept liking it and the followers grew, but that's where I want to like point out to you. She didn't realize she was making promises to herself. And sometimes people have these huge ceremonies, like this is going to be the biggest decision that changes my life. Most of the time it doesn't work that way. That's like some bull crap, self-development stuff. You know, it's really one small decision after mm -hmm. the next and it builds up momentum in your life. And then you're in a completely new spot where your old life isn't even recognizable anymore. Right. And I'm, I'm pretty sure that's where you're at right now. And there's people that are listening in that maybe they are not in the porn industry. They might be in a job that they hate, or mm. they might even be in an entrepreneur 
situation that they've actually come to hate as well. And they need the permission from another woman to just be like, go do it, go do something else. What would you say to that person? It's hard because like you said, like people are scared. Um, and they're in they're. I think that if you know, going into it and have the expectations that you're going to fail, um, it's not as scary anymore. Right. right. And so I think that Go, like my whole like YouTube career, I've failed many times, right? I've been canceled so many times I can't even tell you. But I think knowing that if you want something bad enough that you're gonna just like keep getting back up and doing it and just having the expectations that like you're gonna mess up and it's okay. We all do it. It's how we learn. It's how we move forward. It's how we become successful. All the most successful people in the world have failed many, many times. And it takes people like 10 to 15 years to become successful at whatever it is that they do. It's not like an overnight thing. So I guess me talking about like the glamping camp, I'm like, yeah, I'm going to do it. And I did it. Um, it. There were a lot of years like in the making of this. How important is it for you to be around people that talk like this? That are like, oh yeah, it's just another failure, you know, another, another lesson learned along the way. And they it kind of like, it's contagious, that energy. You're like, oh, okay. I guess I'm overthinking it. Let me move on. Yeah. I I mean, I get excited. I get excited when I fail. Cause I know like, it's just going to make me like, for, like when I found out the permit thing, like I was like, my husband was like, oh yeah, like we got to shut this down and you know, this sucks. And we're going to have to like, you know, maybe go do it somewhere else. And I was like, what? No, <laughs> this is a good thing. Um, mm -hmm. We're learning a lot from this. Something that was really important for me is to surround myself with mentors and other people that have done this or want to do it. And so I signed up for a mastermind where I put myself in a situation with other people that are wanting to do the same thing that I'm doing or have done it. Is that the glamping camp? Like they all wanted to do a glamping thing? A big part is like campgrounds, like RV, uh, like campgrounds. Okay. Um, but yeah, glamping is in it, but it's also just real estate. It's a, it's mainly like a real estate mastermind. So yeah, just a bunch of investors that are investing in all different types of assets and just like learning from them. And, you know, when, when you do have a failure, they're able to help you because they probably have had the same fail, right. That they've learned from. So yeah, I thought that, that's been like huge and helping me. I love pointing out this because nobody gets to where they truly want to be alone it takes people like nobody's actually self-made and, you know, you knew, okay, I got to invest in myself. Like every successful person knows that they've got to invest in themselves, whether it's through education, the mentorship, getting more experience. Right. And so you're like, I'm going to go and give my money to somebody who has what I want. And mm -hmm. so many people have such a hard time wrapping their brains around this. Like I even have friends that you know, it's like, um, hockey mom friends. And they're like, what do you do again? Like people pay you to tell them how to invest in real estate or people pay you to tell you. I'm like, yes, they do. <laughs> you know, like <laughs> it's amazing. Uh, and I've made a whole career out of it. Right. But people like really, like they weren't trained this way growing up. Like it's normal to go to college to get a degree that you're never going to use. Right. But I'm not saying all degrees you don't use, but you guys listening <laughs> and know what I mean. Okay. So like, Talk to me about what was going on in your mind that you knew you had to like invest in yourself and like, do you regret it? Oh, I definitely do not regret ever investing in myself. But I think that, yeah, you're right. A lot, even for me, I had a hard time like getting a business coach, you know, like a private one on one coach. Cause I'm like, dang, this is like a lot of money. And I don't know if it's going to be worth it. The best money I've ever spent is getting yes. coaches and mentors and masterminds. I could not recommend that enough. It's the best thing you'll do. And I know it's hard for a lot of people at first because it could be a lot of money. But if I could teach anyone anything, it would be invest that money in yourself because you are going to make that money tenfold after not just like from the coaching, but from the networking that you are able to meet other people. That's huge, right? Like that is priceless. So Absolutely. I think definitely definitely invest in yourself is probably one of my, my biggest tips. I love that. Okay. So you have two books that people can get on Amazon. So we're going to make sure to link that up. You've got YouTube, you're on Instagram. You also have your glamping camp up on Instagram. So we're going to make sure to link up everything into the show notes. What are some parting words you have for the crafted entrepreneurs listening in? 
Oh, well, thank you for doing that. Um, I would just say thank you so much for, I know everybody's so busy and time is so valuable. And I just really am grateful that everyone listening has taken their time to listen to my story and also Kayla for giving me the opportunity to be here. I just want to say thank you and just don't give up on your dreams because miracles happen as cliche as that sounds. I love that so much. Well, I am so proud of you, Shannon, and I love hearing more about just the background and your heart. You're just like gritty. That's, that's one word to describe you. You're gritty. And I also just feel like God has like his hand of favor over your life and protection over your family. And it's like, I'm going to have to have you back on in a year after the glamping camp is up and like running, Mm -hmm. because I know it's going to be a success because of your mindset. Right. And so I just want to honor you in going after your dreams. Thank you. That's really sweet. I would love to come back on your podcast in a year, (laughs) find out where we're at. That'd be fun. All right. Well, thank you, Shannon. Remember, if you loved this episode to take a screenshot and post it up on social media and tag both me and Shannon so we can possibly repost you, but also just hear from you your thoughts on the episode. Thanks for listening in. 